So we could talk about the strength of the evidence, right? Available, complete, okay. There's also the uh, kinds of evidence. Now, it, there's lots of debate, <laughs> lots of discussion about what counts as evidence, uh, how many kinds there are, whether there's many kinds or just one, where it's all reducible to one. Okay, fine. There's lots of debate we can have about that, and that's really great for a philosophy of logic course. That's not the same thing as a logic course. It's a philosophy of logic course. Okay? Uh, just like, you know, philosophy of math course is not a course in math. It's a course on the philosophy of math. Uh, we're not going to do that. <laughs> it's really cool. Don't get me wrong. It's really cool. It's really interesting, but it would take way too long. Uh, we could devote an entire semester to talk about the kinds of evidence. So we're really only going to consider uh, four kinds of evidence for this course. We've got logical possibility. We've got frequency. We've got propensity. And we've got plausibility. The logical probability or logical possibility, I should say, <laughs> is the probability determined by what is possible. Okay. So a really fantastic example, a classic example of this is flipping a coin. When you flip a coin, well, there's two possibilities. Either it comes up heads or it comes up tails. Okay. If you really want to be picky, I guess maybe you can consider coming up on its edge as a possibility. Okay, if you want. Um, but usually for simplicity's sake, we just simplicity sake, we just you know consider the two uh, that comes up heads or comes up tails. And uh, with flipping a coin, what's logically possible, you flip it, it comes up heads. Right? That's 50-50. If you're trying to figure out the probability of it flipping, you know, flipping a coin and coming up heads twice, right? Well, that's well. What are the outcome, possible outcomes? Heads or tails the first time, heads or tails the second time, getting heads heads both times. Well, that's one possibility out of four. So it's just a 0.25. So logical prob uh, pro probability determined by logical possibility is just determined by what's possible. And so flipping the, the coin, right? Uh, what's possible is it comes up heads the first time and, and heads the second time, or it comes up heads the first time and tails the second time, or it comes up tails the first time and heads the second time, or it comes up tails the first time and tails the second time, right? Those are four possibilities. Uh, and if you want to figure out, you know, the possibility that you're looking for, like the, that's called the favorite outcome or the one that you're looking for, maybe coming up heads twice in a row, well, that's one possibility, right, out of four. So it's, it's 0.25 is the probability there. Um, this is, again, this is determined solely by what is possible. Right? And you're trying to figure out the probability of one of those cases. Now, it's important to remember that with logical probability, you have to find possibilities, excuse me, <laughs> with the probability determined by logical possibility, you have to find the possibilities and they have to be exclusive from each other, meaning like one and only one of those events can happen, and 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 you know two things can't happen at once, right? So it can't the coin can't land heads and tails at the same time. Right? It's not going to work that way. <sighs> so you figure out what's possible, find your pro uh, your favorite outcome, and that determines the probability uh, in, in that situation. So dice, coins, cards, right? These are all classic examples of logical probability, of, of probability determined by logical possibility. Mm -hmm.